I am J.W. Braun, and I'm here today at the birthplace of Dungeons & Dragons, Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. It was right here that Gary Gygax invented the famous swords and sorcery role-playing game, and in fact, gamers around the world are trying to collect money to build a memorial to Gary Gygax, which will go right here in Library Park. Many gamers have made the pilgrimage to Lake Geneva to see where it all began, and one such man was Ethan Gilsdorf, who is the author of today's book, Fantasy Freaks and Gaming Geeks. Published by Lions Press in 2009, Gilsdorf's book is 336 pages and is part memoir, part travelogue, and part pop culture analysis, recounting his trips back and forth across America, as well as England, France, and New Zealand. Gilsdorf gives a well-researched account of how the fantasy gaming genre began and how it has developed into the pop cultural phenomenon it is now. Along the way, he says much about The Lord of the Rings and Professor Tolkien, and the author even includes a chapter about his quest to see Tolkien's original handwritten manuscripts, a journey that, interestingly enough, brings him right back here to southeastern Wisconsin. Yes, Dungeons & Dragons was invented in virtually the same place that Tolkien's manuscripts can be found. With its breezy, well-organized narrative, supplemented with black and white photos, Fantasy Freaks and Gaming Geeks is a fun read that leaves the reader wanting more. Gilsdorf is the perfect choice to host the journey. He's enough of a fantasy and gaming fan to treat his subject matter with respect, but he's not one of those over-the-edge fans that doesn't understand why it's unusual to have a Jedi Knight Council in your backyard. Like me. In short, Gilsdorf is an everyman. He's able to bridge the divide between the regular folks and the freaks and geeks. That said, the book ends somewhat without resolution and doesn't have an uplifting, grand, unifying ending. It would be great to read about Gilsdorf bumping into Peter Jackson in New Zealand, whereupon the wise director explains and vindicates all fantasy freaks and gaming geeks, and perhaps lets Gilsdorf in on the meaning of life too. But truth be told, Gilsdorf's report of his visit to New Zealand is somewhat anticlimactic, and the book sort of meanders out afterwards without much punch. All in all, however, Gilsdorf's journey of discovery and self-reflection is an interesting tale that won't disappoint. My score for this book, out of five stars, is four stars. I'll see you next time on J.W. Braun's Bookshop.